Welcome back, everyone, to the show. Starring a sea captain and his four anchors. Also, some other guys, the cast, basically unknown. You're watching Star Ladder Season 11 Europe. I'm Helium. With me, Blaze. How's it going? Going pretty good. That was a hell of an intro. We're looking at these two teams here. Basically, known, I guess their second game here in Star Ladder. The first one against Virtus Pro. Uh, it went all right. I mean, it wasn't uh, the complete domination until really the mid-game hit and the, the heroes that Virtus Pro picked really hit their stride. But uh, where they were fine in mechanical skill in the lanes, I f felt that they kind of lacked coordination when it came to a global scale. I mean, of course, they were up against the Zeus, so there's always going to be more global coordination when you have global abilities. But generally speaking, like they weren't really as active about TPing across the map or finding opportunities where they could collaborate. They were looking for solo pickoffs a lot, and they really just weren't looking for the whole team uh, domination that Virtus Pro obviously found. So in that sense, I think maybe they should be looking a lot into their draft. If you pull a really good, like cheesy best of one draft out, you're going to be able to take some wins and prove yourself a little bit more and get a little bit more competitive experience. But maybe they will test their metal with something more standard. For now, it's the Vengeful Spirit Witch Doctor, which is a good support duo for pushing, as well as uh, some good physical damage there. The Brewmaster is going to be their hero of choice for the mid lane to kind of tempo control. And the Anti-Mage is going to be their hero to take down. AM is an interesting choice against Vengeful Witch Doctor, since they don't put out that much magic damage, but he does have a nice uh, blink to disjoint some of their projectiles, and, of course, he farms hella fast, uh, courtesy of Matumbo Man. Yeah, fairly early in the draft, too, coming up third. There's not a crazy amount of heroes that you pick up that just directly counter anti-mage, sure, like any sort of aggression can slow him down, but even slowing him down a lot of times isn't enough of the answer for the anti-mage that can just find so much farm so quickly, especially upon the completion of the Battle Fury. But right now, basically Unknown are, are looking to brawl. They've got the Aura, the Stun, and the Swap from the Venge and the team fight Control, the big ultimates from both the Brewmaster and the Witch Doctor. Taking a look at all the bands quickly. Ogre, Elder Titan, Terrorblade, Phantom Assassin, Slark, Ember Spirits, Faceless Void, and the Spider Mama. All banned out, and yeah, looking for that fourth pick. Dipping now into reserve. It's the puck. Yeah, they did put the puck last time, and uh, that went all right for them. I think they didn't. Mind control didn't really play it in like a AOE sense, though. The puck often went for single dream coils, which in some situations can be absolutely they fine. Them. They were so far behind that game. Yeah. I mean, you'll, t you'll take what's given to you, right? But uh, along those lines, like they kept on trying to just go for the solo dream coils and. Uh, really, they needed something big to put them back in their game. So I would have to say that they need to be looking towards something uh, very big in terms of initiation, not just settling for uh, an, you know, a lowly Skywrath pickoff, but look for like at least a three-man coil to really get fights going for them. Because they do have a good team fight lineup. The Primal Split, the Death Ward brings a lot here, but it's uh, hard enough for the Puck to go up against the Death Prophet in the mid lane, but following that up with uh, the non-ideal initiations isn't going to be their ticket into a win here. So um, one thing to note is that the Brewmaster and the Puck uh, commonly for some teams are played on the offlane, but your general player is going to run them only mid or safe. So in that sense, they might actually be considering a safe lane Brewmaster that they get farm up on early. The, that's not saying that the hero can't go that route. Puck certainly can offlane. We've seen DK Phobos play a lot of offlane Brew, but it's just uh, not the most conventional for your average team. But we still have a lot of unknowns here for basically unknown, so we'll have to see if they have a, a trick up their sleeve. Either way, the Death Prophet is going to be good for uh, counteracting most of these heroes. Witch Doctor wants to channel that ultimate. Puck and Brewmaster need to cast their spells to survive. And uh, Death Prophet, one good silence could uh, thwart that intention. Yep, see the Earthshaker banned out. Not wanting to deal with those stuns. They want their Brewmaster Brewlings to be able to chase down absolutely anybody. And uh, even coming into the team fights, uh, Anti Mage. Might be looking for an MKB at some time during this game, or at least a BKB, just to deal with uh, the Drunken Haze, let alone getting cycloned up and maybe just ignored, uh, like we did see, what was it, the, the Medusa and the Navi game, just being completely ignored, being cycloned, Yules, 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 cycloned. Uh, I could see a similar thing here, but Anti-Mage Death Prophet, some direct push, some split push, looking for the last ban by the four anchors. What a basically unknown need right now. It's really... An offlaner or just that one roll? Hit some creep Radiant hero. Mm -hmm. So, like him being banned out by 4ASC, they already have their primary core here. The, the 
obviously like and would not work too well in their lineup. So they're looking for their off laner. I guess the uh, Jakira could go on the off lane. I guess that's what basically I don't believe is to be the case because they do bring out the Earthshaker. If Jakira goes to the off lane and Earthshaker uh, Fisher blocks for him pulling the lane back, it's actually pretty difficult to pick him off and he gets the experience he needs to start pushing at level 7. But uh, I, there's a good chance that they still just run the Jakira support, in which case there are a lot of good uh, off laners that get left in the pool. The Tide Hunter, I think, is a big one for Trixie. Trixie really rocks the off lane Tide and they want Jakira to go support. I think that'll work perfectly fine. The Sven, however, is going to be the last pick for basically unknown. We mentioned it in the previous draft and uh, up against the Elder Titan. It's a very common pick. But here it's uh, really just about getting some good stuns. Unfortunately, another one that's disjointable by the Anti-Mage, though. So they even more so have to prioritize the Puck, the Link Waning Rift. Is it still disjointable? I thought they buffed Stormhammer. Uh, they actually nerfed it to an extent. Like It used oh. to be only disjointable by Invis. And now it's just uh, straight up disjointable. Well, I can't read, guys. Lycan was the ban. Uh, Sven the pick. Actually, really excited to see that hero. Again, adds potentially another blink initiator to your lineup, uh, along with that of the puck and the brewmaster. So maybe there's some item dependence on. Uh, well, there definitely is for the brewmaster and the puck. Sven, I guess his other starting items, you can just go for that very early BKB. Treads, drums. I know some pros like the drums of endurance on Sven, some absolutely do not. Uh, with the extra movement and armor from Warcry, it just seems unnecessary. Slows down your BKB, slows down your blink. We'll see what route this Fennel wants to take. And, well, I think basically unknown, we're pretty on point with that Earthshaker ban because similar hero, or similar function, I guess, comes out in the Sand King, going to be played by JRX. Yeah, so it is going to be the Trixie offlane Jakira, and this gives them a lot of AoE magic damage. They're going to rely on the Burrow Strikes pretty heavily to actually set up the, like, Macropyre and stuff like that. Like, Jakira by himself can sometimes get people in for a, a couple of seconds here and there, but they need some slows and stuns to, to go the rest of the way there. And uh, yeah, it was uh, the 6.79 patch that nerfed the Stormhammer as far as disjointable, though it did get reduced cooldown from 15 to 13, so that's something at least. Anyways, uh, as far as the lanes go for basically unknown, it looks to be the offlane puck, mid brewmaster, and safe lane Sven. Uh, and, I mean, Fen Ventral Spirit, Witch Doctor, and Sven can get a lot of kills. Like, the Jakiro probably will be dying a couple of times this game. We've seen Trixie struggle a little bit um, in that scenario, and if they do for, like, a duo offlane, I'm not sure if that'll be for better or for worse. But at least for now, he's going to go for the Ring Protection start, no boots, and it's going to be on basically unknowns to try to go for a lot of pulling and keep him away from the experience because Jakira isn't one of those offlaners that you just can say, okay, my lane's screwed, I'll rotate in the jungle, and it means that he's going to have to push forward. He's going to have to man up a little bit, and that gives room for error. That gives opportunities for the chain stun to come through and for them to find some easy kills, which they really want in the early game here. All right, taking a look through the lineups. We'll start with the Witch Doctor here. That's going to be Zoroji. On the puck, uh, that will be Kefka. Brewmaster going to be played here. Who is on the Brewmaster? Mind Control. We've got Sneaky on the Spen. And last but not least, we've got our Vengeful Spirit. And that's going to be played by Magoma as they are moving out in force into the enemy jungle, looking to drop down some of these wards. But, well, actually, we'll find Anti Mage. Hmm. So first ward is going to block off the pull camp here. It's not as common to actually ward the dire pull camp anymore because it only takes two sentries to take care of it. But uh, since it is so uncommon, there might be a little bit of a meta aspect where people don't think about the wards as much anymore and they might uh, misplace them. Either way, Boogie's going to ward up the top rune area and this is going to be good for any kinds of rotations towards the top rune. I think the puck is gonna, probably going to go for a bottle alongside the brew and they're going to be pretty reliant on that mana sustain. But... Uh, we're seeing something different than what I, I called out as far as lanes go. It looks like it's going to be an aggro try, and I like this a lot because the Puck solo offlane against a Skywrath, about level 3, the Skywrath can get an easy kill on him with combining his forces with the Anti-Mage, silencing the during during the Illusion Orb so he can't jaunt away and uh, just causing some grief. So instead, it's going to be a 1 versus 2 matchup to start the Jikiro Sand King versus the Puck, and that'll leave us with uh, obviously this aggro try. Yep, looking at that, it's going to be made up of the Sven, the Witch Doctor, the Vengeful Spirit. Not too surprising to see the aggression come out. I mean, against the Anti-Mage, I mentioned it on the draft. One of the things you can do to at least slow him down is just do that aggressive try line. Here's JRX, though, playing one of uh, 
His heroes of recent acclaim with some body blocks, with some stuns, some crazy first bloods he pulled out at Dream League on this hero so far. Since then, though, the four anchors, maybe even on a little bit of a slump, haven't had much success here in the last couple games in Star Ladder. I, I think they had one upset the other day, but there's been a lot of games I can't even quite remember. Yep, so he's going to trade a lot of hits, and there's going to be the first blood spilled there. That if they connect with any stun, Anti-Mage is in for a lot of trouble. He doesn't have magic stick and doesn't have any points in spell shield at only level 1. So all they need is one stun to connect, and they can follow it through for the first blood there. Very nice kill, and it's, it's the entire intention of this landing phase is to make sure the Anti-Mage doesn't get creeps, and if possible, kill him off. There's so uh, much regen, too. Started with 8 tangles and a cell. Yeah, and it's just not enough because it's not the static HP is yeah. what he needs. But, yeah, there you have it. Uh, Jerex down bottom was uh, forced to buy up another clarity here. The Huck actually canceled both of them just to make sure that he wasn't able to keep the, the stuns rolling there. So he did lose a bit of HP, but it was for a greater cause because he knew he wouldn't be burrow struck as frequently. Though now Jerex is kind of waiting, hiding, lurking, and has full mana. I think that's uh, pretty good words to describe his play style. And... In Dota 2, middle lane mind control versus Valix. This is a lane. Oh, here it is. Jerex yeah, with the boots. This is, a, this is a really well, bad position actually, for Puck. Puck just keeps running this way, I think it's going to be fine. Maybe the Burrow Strike, but it's only level 1 over the cliff. Yeah. I don't think he even gets that range. So nice presence of mind from Kefka to just move up towards the north. Running into enemy territory, but sometimes that's... Uh, what is the thing? Like the Chinese finger trap or whatever? Yeah, that's a thing. I don't know how it applies. I'm trying to but... make the reference. Like, you have to go into the trap to get out of it. I've never been able to solve those things, so I, I can't comment on... Well, I've, 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 I don't really muck about with it very often. I think that's... I've in, encountered two in my lifetime, but the two that I'm it, over involved... It tightens with. as you try to pull apart, so you have to go in to get your fingers out of it. So he's, like, running in... Whatever. Twitch check gets it. I'm sure they do. They get it. <laughs> so smart. They are but, so uh, Yep, yeah, we're going to see Boogie do some good damage here to the Venge. The big thing is he has two points in Arcane Bolt, so it's a shorter cooldown. It's doing a lot more damage, and he's probably going to get a oh, solo kill. Because of it. A silence wouldn't do it, but that second point in Arcane Bolt. Ooh. Too strong. Oh, the magic stick keeps him alive, though, and the Sav. He's still up for a while. This blink isn't going to come through for forever, it feels like. Oh, and Brewmaster's got a haste. A haste rune turn around. Oh, that was a little bit too far forward. You got to stun them. Magoma, Magoma now, but jump him in. Out, and the blink won't be enough to escape. Oh, he won't even get my. it. Oh, that magic stick. It could have been such an easy kill, but Magoma just gets enough magic stick charges. And, of course, Skyrath, he spams a lot of spells. So he heals up <laughs> and is able to bait them into uh, two deaths, which is actually huge for them. Valix is like, thanks, team. Report, report safe lane, please. His mid lane has, uh, it's already a matchup that's not that favorable, although Valix is doing really well. 20 and 7 on the last hits, 21 and 4 on Brewmaster, but Brewmaster picking up those, uh, those two kills. Or did he get them both, actually? Uh, yeah, he did. It was a double kill there for the Brew, so. Big, big gold going his way. Already 1,500 gold, I think. He hasn't quite bought his boots tier 1 yet. Uh, and at this rate, with that happening to you, do you think he even maybe just goes in for the minus? Uh, I think just a faster blink dagger is perfectly acceptable. I don't just, yeah, uh, no minus brew, please. All right. I've seen it a, a couple times. It's nothing I, I really agree with, but I think if you do take the Midas route and actually build up your Aura Brewmaster and some like actual carry items instead of, say, the Ags. Then it'll fall off not as hard in the late game, oh. but Matumba made another big kill potential up here in the top lane. That cast, cast bounces. Doing Jeez. it good. I, again, I'll reiterate, I swear it takes heroes over creeps. Tooltip has been lying to us. I don't know, man. Yeah, I think the Brewmaster could just, if he gets an early Blink Dagger, just kill off a couple of supports. Like, I don't think the Midas would give you more gold than just blinking in earlier when the supports can't deal with your Thunderclap initiation. Because you can get easy kills on them without splitting, and then you will get that golden experience, as well as to taking it away from your enemy. So I think it's just better in general. Trixie is going to get silenced up on the bottom lane. It's just a, a trade back and forth since uh, the Jakiro knows he has the HP regen from Tranquils, as well as the Ring of Regen. And, uh, of course, he's naturally tankier, so it's pretty nice for him to be active and aggressive, though um, he might have to back off the lane once or twice to restore his HP. Magoma trying to uh, force out some more plays to be had in the middle lane. He's wrapped around hiding in the little tree line. He actually leaves it now. 
We'll find Boogie again. Boogie probably going to think twice before he keeps throwing out the spells this time. Uh, I, th I thought there were some clutch plays from the Skywrath pop and the Clarity to continue spamming. Obviously, the stick plays by Venge, but actually they'll just, Dying in passing, walk by each other. Might not even have seen um, each other just because it is nighttime. Approaching six minutes, the runes. Looks like top is going to be gobbled up by the Radiant, no problem. The haste rune in bottom will actually be going the way of Trixie, who has not died yet. We've seen, we saw a lot of dead Jakiros yesterday, and Trixie mm -hmm. was uh, quite a few of them. But here he is, zero, zero, and zero, so hold it on. Important thing here is Jack's getting his stacks off. This is a triple stack, or sorry, double stack on the hard camp, and he is going to be able to sandstorm that down. So he's going to be able to move in towards level four here. Often you get like a really good hard stack triple camp, then uh, you're going to be in a position to get level five very quickly, but he's got experience being leached from him, and it is only a double. Oh, one, nice, right, Magoma. Like, one creep oh, kill that from Magoma, but he will die for it, I believe. Uh, the last right click Oh, the stick again! <laughs> Are you kidding me? This is ridiculous. Well, the play was definitely going to be made. Mind control, though. Ran out of mana. I think he wanted the primal split right away. He might think about throwing it out, and he will. JRX was uh, able to get into get the tree the line. If he thinks he knows where JRX is, I, I, he could have went from here to here and got out of the tree line is probably what Brew thinks, and obviously yeah. he can't see him. But, but if he immolated from the high kill. ground, that would have been pretty yeah, nice. Yeah, if he just kept the fire panda there, had he known, up probably would have been the man up top gonna be again. stunned up. Three, I mean, it's three stuns. You connect with yeah. one stun, he's dead. And the, the blink animation makes it so that's not always possible. Like, if it's a blink dagger, that's instant. But the anti-mage, there's a, there's a small little spin-around swirl time where he's, he's doing his fancy not magics. I think at this point you'd rather have, what is it now on Anti-Mage, the three deaths on your Jakiro as opposed to the Anti-Mage as uh, Matumbaman having a pretty hard time. He's got 26 last hits, three denied. Compare that to the Brewmaster for Unknown. That's 44 and 8. The Death Prophet, though, doing well, a little under 40. Trixie also going to get quite a lot out of this and see what he wants to go for. With this Ring of Regen, uh, maybe rushing out the mechanism. Yeah, a lot of ways to go with that. Headdress, four staff. Um... We'll see. But for now, he takes the tier 1 tower down bottom. That's a big deal because, of course, he's the one that can now rotate. The puck is still kind of resigned to his lane, wants to get uh, Blink Dagger up pretty soon. Nice sentry war coming out onto Jerex here. They will be able to chain up with the cask bouncing around. Not back to the Sand King, but they still get the kill. The sentry ward is also going to prevent him from sandstorming down these neutrals later. But for now, it's going to be Magoma being chased down. The magic stick is strong with this one, though. And it's he's like all he's been doing is running away this entire game. Hey. It's great bait. I radiated our bait. Yo, I think uh, Jakiro going for the uh, the helium tested improved double tranquil boots. The regen <laughs> stacks. It's hilarious. It's, that's kind of dumb, but also completely overkill. He's not going for it, but it is actually really funny. Uh, and there's a blink dagger already up, and the range for that clap is there if you just use it. I'm pretty sure that'll hit, but they want the dream call to be sure of it. And actually, he might lose the kill. Oh, no, waiting to... I don't. Yeah, I don't know. That was that was weird communication there. No, you dream coil. No, you thunderclap. No, you dream coil. And eventually, they'll get the kill, but narrowly. Uh, the stuns were used. Was so sad right now in his jungle. The sentry ward gives sight to the neutrals, so he cannot sandstorm down this camp. It has to be cleared by the death prophet. Dude, that's genius. You didn't know that. I, I mean, I knew, but I didn't really think about it. It's so fucking annoying. Like, I, the second I saw that ward, I'm like, oh, that's going to fuck him up. But uh, Antimage dies again. The God Strength committed this time around. I mean, it's, it is it is bottom line. They get close enough. They get, like, within 200 units of him so they can get the stun out, and he can't have time to blink it. That's all that's happening up there is they have three stuns, and he's not keeping his distance. He wants to farm the creeps. But, yeah, it happens a lot when you have a sentry ward up here on the... Uh, the, the kind of top rune spawn area, yeah, if you were it'll range. look over, and that camp is just completely unstormable. But in this That's case, awesome. they use it to get a kill on him and frustrate his endeavors. Matumbaman probably doesn't mind very much, but uh, I, I've missed a few of his deaths analyzing JRX and his uh, plays in the bottom lane slash his jungle being sentried up. Matumbaman's like, you know, it's cool. I've died four times. Go to the bottom lane, though, taking away the mana of Kefka, trying to get the mana void, but... The tree line vision, he can't get the line of sight, and that allows Puck to take that orb away. Matumbaman with the blink, though, in one more second. He goes for the 1-1-1, one, 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 three points into the stats in the mana void. Actually rolling the 1-1-1-1 one, 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 one build on Anti-Mage. As you pointed out in the draft, there's not that much magic damage coming out. A lot of physical from Unknown, and not putting more than one point oh. in the spell shield. 
In, in the landing phase, he it's going to be a decent amount of magic damage, but later on, it's all about the physical, the the god strength, the death ward, that kind of stuff. Um, and honestly, the second point of magic shield, shield or spell shield is really crappy anyways. Magoma going down under tower, tries to go for a cheeky play, but there's no free anti-mage kill here, only the, the death as they see the rotations, and they go for the tier 1 push up top. I just had a question come in on Twitter, which is actually pretty interesting. Uh, do you know if Basically Unknown inherited Cloud9's record? Um, I'd have to ask the admins on that one. That was yeah, the, uh, I told him the we'll find out. Really we'll try so. to find out after this game. It was uh, hardly even really announced to us. I only found out the schedule by looking at Gosu Gamers, as I'm sure most of you probably did. I, I, based on precedence, I believe that is the case. Yeah, so, so that's like Tech Loss versus um, X Game versus MYI. Those are probably the teams that they had the better chance of taking a win off of, unfortunately. But we do see smoke down bottom. Matoma Man this time quick on the blink away, but they're still in pursuit. They get the Dream Coil, and not really much place to run from here. They will silence him, they will stun him, and they will death ward him. Yeah, but they said they might get him, though. There's not enough stuns in the Vengeful Spirit with all the bodies in there and the traffic. He couldn't find up the follow-up stun. Yeah, they needed the Magic Missile, unfortunately. And that's still a lower cooldown limitation on Blink, so he really needs to get that up to rank 4 right now. You know his next levels are going for it. That's the 9 second cooldown for his Blink, looking for the 7, and then the 5. Well, the standard build for Anti-Mage in a safe lane farming sense is usually that you go for the 1-1-1. One, one, one. You don't even bother yeah. with points, extra points in Blink. You get extra points in stats to survive, just like he did. Because if you look at it, he's got plus 6 strength when he doesn't have anything but uh, he had the intreds on at the time. So he's actually pretty tanky for his level. And it's actually better to have lower points in Blink until you start farming actively with that uh, Battle Fury. Nice kill with the Mana Void and with the Crypt Swarm, but now looking to pursue on to zero. Has a Haste Rune still up, but doesn't go in, and that's because his Mind Control is waiting. Could actually dispel the Haste if he goes for the split at the right time. Now let's look at what that does for the Anti-Mage. They find that kill here, and it's going to be 436 experience for Anti-Mage. And the Death Prophet Antimage doing the bulk of that damage, a little under 500 with the Mana Void and some attacks. He tre tread swapped 11 times during that team fight. What a player. So it's going to be uh, Tempted Silence here on to Brewmaster, and they get it right after the Ice Pass. So no split coming out, and a uh, nice easy kill. I guess they had a, actually a chance to TP out of that now that I think about it. Like, obviously, the split is your first reaction. But if there's a silence involved, there's no way it's happening. So if right after the Ice Path connected, he had went for the uh, TP away, I think there were three seconds there. But it's hard to know that the Ice Path is only level two. Yeah, the macro pyre does hurt. Jakiro's picked that up. It looks like it won't be the mechanism. He is going to go for the... What the hell is he doing? Like, he's... All right. He's got the Ring of Regen. He could have built a Forest Town. He's got the Sage's Mask. He's going for the Yules. I think he I was overreact, the puff but... Pot, so it could be casual and a, a long-term investment. Like, he doesn't have to do anything with it immediately. Yeah, so the Staff of Wizardry building into both of those, he'll need... Now that he has the recipe, he needs up to the 875 in current gold uh, for the Void Stone. So it's not too far off either, about 200 gold, 300 gold. And now up top, pushing Sneaky. Puck is here as well. Kefka Ooh, very sneaky. Oh, I thought it was a two-man nice. burrow. It's just going to be one onto Kefka. The silence is there. He's not going to go down, though. It's close. Actually, the right click to follow oh. will get in, and Sneaky Red Sven is a dangerous Sven. And you'll see what he did there was he actually sandstormed in and then began walking to go for the burrow strike play. That makes him invis. He was nighttime, so the vision wasn't there. And essentially, he came out of the thin air with that burrow strike. So... It was good just to get that extra, like, you get, like, uh, about 150, 200 units close to your target before they are able to react, and that's uh, what nets them the kill, though it does uh, cost them the Sand King at the cost of God's strength. Look at these Yule Scepters being used so great for this uh, aggressive, and there you go, Sneaky, he doesn't have a Primal Split, so his first reaction is TP, and actually, I saw it happening, but we looked at the Sven, Anti-Mage is going to go down as uh, Magoma Mind Control and Zoroji rotate onto him as he was farming up, he actually, an enemy jungle. Yeah, he got he got clapped, uh, crit, and death warded with a magic missile, and yep, that uh, doesn't take too long to bring him down. He's not as tanky as he'd like to be right now. The tier one tower, of course, goes down. Liquid fire exorcism, pretty good at killing both Sven and towers, but uh, they are going to try to even it up in the mid lane. All right, actually, good information just received here from Gustav Hansen at Panda Dota Two on Twitter. Actually, the manager 
of Basically Unknown, let it be known, that uh, they're going to actually replay all of the games oh, that, that's Cloud really 9, nice for them. that Cloud9 got a death loss. If, if you think about it, two of those games weren't even played. Like, it's not like I the... think I think they're just replaying the default losses. Okay, okay. So they still so get it's half and half. Versus... Half Inheritance, half... Virtus Pro Polar, right? Um, yeah, that, that was the two-hour game, Yes, right? that was the amazing game. The longest game, second longest game on record of the day, it, it didn't even matter. Well, sad times. Go. I'm a sad boy, honestly. At least we got some Cloud9 in the Starlight Tournament. That's true. To remember. Look on the bright side, friend. But, yeah. So, I mean, that makes sense. The death losses were just scheduling and the fact that they were pulling out, it really doesn't apply. It's not like, it's it's not frustrating for those two teams because they didn't, it's not like they fought for a win and then it gets taken away from them. They didn't play the games and now they do. It's not that big a deal. Swap coming in. Jakiro <laughs> goes for the defensive Yule's response. Decent, but they commit everything just to make sure he goes down and they do get the Ooh, coil, coil. onto Death Prophet. Very quick on her feet though. And uh, one coil will not be enough. Actually, also, I, I can't read. I think I've mentioned that a couple times over the last couple days. The games they played, and he put it in parentheses, so it, can, it confused me. And so they're replaying everything. Okay, so that's even better. We're just going to pull or play to our game, and then they have to play another. Uh, oh, well. It happens. Hey, they're lucky they're playing over there in VPP. Don't know what that's supposed to mean, but we got Sneaky up top taking some hits. The Ancient Seal plus Mystic Flare and a Courier Snipe. That is actually the Dyer's Courier, and it is up towards the top rune spawn. I believe it was sniped up by a Blink Crit from the Brewmaster, and that's a Blink Dagger that won't be making its way to Jerax for another three minutes. A very, very big Cory Snipe. Yeah. VPP was NVMI, which stood for something in Russian that meant we're lucky we're playing, so... Oh... Uh... Yeah, I never, I never translated that one. Google translate. For anyone who got that when I said it the first time, that's that's some major, some major kudos. Yeah, I, I've, I've had some issues with Google Translate recently, so I'm starting to not even bother. Like NIP, I was just like I'm not getting anything, so it's just like, whatever. But uh, yeah, they were NVMI formerly, and uh, they they, had, they lost God Black, and now they're a completely different team in my heart. Yeah, and so is Navi, I guess, as a result of the uh, the other side of that trade, looking. I don't think FNG was like a core aspect of the no, Navi. No, for sure, but it's, I guess. I mean, Go Black going back to his uh, a team he had played on previously is pretty cool. Mm hmm. So as far as uh, item progression here, since uh, we still have a, a game before us, we are 11 to 8, favoring basically unknown. But when we look at the golden experience, it's pretty even. I mean, a, a 2,000 experience advantage is all for ASC has. However, if I had to give late game to one team over another, I would definitely say the Dumbman coming back into it with the Battle Fury should be able to outfarm anybody else. But you never count out the Sven, right? Anyways, uh, the Sven is going to be building up a Blink Dagger right now. Did go no, drum. Worries. Yeah, Drum treads the Magic Wand and the Blink Dagger. He's in a really good spot to find some good picks and uh, kind of snowball momentum now. I mean, this is where he starts initiating. And with this team, they have the damage that they need. Uh, Kefka also has a Blink Dagger looking at top lane. Boogie already knowing what's up thanks to the Observer Ward. On <laughs> They're the still going to give chase. We're going to see another coil here from Kefka. It's going to be just solo on a support, but hey, trying to find those kills. The stun out onto the Sven. Going to get the Mind Stealer as well. Boogie will fall, but also going down for the puck. Not a great trade here for the side of basically unknown. And actually, the team fight is not done. Brewmaster also going to go in on the other yeah. side of this onto Matumbaman. He's going to throw out the primal split. Up, Meanwhile, Trixie stopping all the aggression in its tracks with the Ice Path. Sneaky going in, though, for it. The Immolate coming out from the Jakiro, trying to burn him down. Matumbaman's in the trees. Nice macro. Pyres the Roji's like, whoa, I don't want to stand in that. Now JRX looking for a big, big burrow. Might have to settle oh, for just a single target. And now the Exorcism coming in, already cast as he TPs JRX. Got to get closer, pretty close to the range. Come on, the move speed differential. I don't think there is one. 350, actually 10, 10 extra on Witch Doctor is the difference there. Yeah, I'm really surprised Volix didn't do, get anything with that because he had the double damage, he had the exorcism, and he definitely could have at least used the Brewmaster. They could have gone to pursue on him, but he went for a, a longer <laughs> range oh target and the Yules didn't connect. These bounces. Follow the anti-mage to the neutrals, and it almost was stunning up Matumbaman and Valix as unknown. We're still trying to chase him down. These uh, these were some really weird fights, honestly. Like the Brewmaster Ultimate didn't it did some damage to the anti-mage, it forced him back, 
and then it helped kind of secure the kill with Jakiro after Sven goes in deep, but it didn't do all that much. And then the Exorcism obviously uh, came in after the fact. Tower destroyed by the Dire, they took care of that, and then he TPs in, but he doesn't do anything with that either. So now they have no Exorcism to fight, there is no Primal Split to fight, but uh, that uh, Death Ward could be the difference maker here. Sankin so going to start things off with a stun. Greeted by a Mystic Flare to the face. Magoma once again just eternally running right now. He will finally go down. Now the Death Ward is going to kill Trixie. Stun the Storm Hammer. Now Red Sven. He's an angry Sven. He's got that god strength and he's going to bring down the Death Prophet super quick. Mind Control working on Boogie realizes it's a support kill. Not a big deal right now. They want to try to get some of these objectives. Bring down the towers and start to get a little bit closer to the Ancients of the Four Anchors. Yep, so a pretty awesome fight for basically unknown here. They're able to clean things up. The Jakiro died almost solo to the Witch Doctor. Did a lot of damage to him, and on the front lines, obviously, the Brewmaster and Puck got to do some work. Sven as well. So they were able to really just uh, get the right targets brought down, and they got a nice gold swing in their favor. Experience on... Uh, two heroes got a ton of experience. <laughs> oh, my God. Why is he still farming the lane? It's because like 2 HP. Uh, that's unfortunate. Uh, I'm looking at the fight recap, and two of the heroes got tons of experience, and the other three got, like, a small amount. I'm guessing only Sven and Brewmaster were in range for, like, the Death Prophet kill. I think that was the bigger one as far as levels go. She is, uh, she's certainly up there on the dire side. But, uh, yeah, it's kind of surprising that specifically Sven and Brew got a ton of experience out of that one. All right, Epicenter was channeled and immediately canceled out by Sneaky, Brewmaster, and Sven. Again, you said they were close in the last team fight. Where here they are, up close and personal with the twin-headed dragon. They're going to forcibly fondle him down. Trixie, what is that? Zero and six. He had a good landing phase, at least. He did, he did. On the back line, Jarek, so maybe looking for like a link triple burrow, but for now it's going to be just Boogie. Still only defending the They're tower. There's going to be an oh. ultimate, and yeah, Sneaky's getting out of here. So this is actually Sanking to just jump in and clean this up. Uh, mind Control still might not go down here. They might even turn it around. Meanwhile, Sneaky TP'd up top to deal with the, once again, the Anti-Mage is going to fall, and they will kill JRX in the bottom lane. It's a killing spree. He'll go straight back to base. The Dire deposited a ward as well as themselves to the soil on the Radiant side to make it a little bit greener. These fights are so wild. Like, what? A, everything is happening so chaotic. Everything's spread out across the map. Anti-Mage dying a lot more than he should, but, I mean... In this situation, he still doesn't have the Manta style to help disjoint those spells a little more rapidly. So, yeah, Sneaky TPing away under the tower. The TP does not get canceled by the Sand King. He, I guess he was happy with him leaving because he thought he had a better chance of getting the Panda kill if he does not cancel the Sven. So, he blinks, stuns the Sven. He dies under the tower thanks to the fact that uh, the Venge had a nice Sentry Ward, which I, I didn't check in time, but... Yeah, in this position, they're actually cleaning up across the map, and I guess Chaos really favors basically unknown because uh, any form of breakdown of coordination and communication is, is going to be better against veteran teams. So they spread the fights out a little bit here, and it really feels like all the fights they've won have been on multiple fronts, like the Witch Doctor getting to single out somebody with Death Lord, or uh, in this case, just breaking apart across the entire map. All right, let's check out, actually, maybe not. Matumbaman going to have to blink away after getting crit there from the brew. It was a fairly even game, a little back and forth, wibbly-wobbly with the graphs, but right now it's 3,000 gold advantage for Unknown, which isn't an incredible amount. I mean, we've seen Antimages from a rocky start uh, come out and uh, take games super ultra hyper omega late, uh, as in a game that basically Unknown will actually have to replay. But 7,000 experience as well. The last couple minutes, starting around 20, up now to under 25 minutes, have gone fantastic here for the Unknown Squad. They're going to smoke up, find Anti-Mage at some Ancients. They're going to get the Thunder Hide and the Anti-Mage. Boo! Good stuff. Uh, the Skyroth Mage, kind of dueling out with the bug a little bit, has that four staff, so obviously able to be a little bit more active and involved, but right now the big thing here is the tower is going down, left, right, and center, and thanks to Volix's exorcism. They get the map control, but obviously Unknown will take the rush. Yeah, so it's nice that they can get something out of that. It's a it's a trade, and yeah, the tier 2 tower is not important, but yeah, you're making a trade, you're behind. It's generally pretty good 
for the team that is behind. If you're ahead, like, you don't want to make trades. You want to get away with highway robbery and have the other team unable to do anything. And it is pretty hard to have complete dominance, but that is, I guess, the best case scenario. So we've got, where are we? Actually, still the anchors with the highest net worth hero. We've talked a lot about anti-mage dying. But who's doing really well is, is the Death Prophet. 3,100 gold in the bank right now. 4-1-2. 171 CS. And 12.4k net worth. The highest mm. slightly above even the Brew and the Sven. And that's a really big deal because the only one that's going to have scalable damage to bring her down is either like a, a Witch Doctor hitting level 16 getting eggs up or the Sven getting like his crit and Daedalus all together very quickly. So... Uh, when it comes down to it, if she can get like a heart in Shiva's guard, she's going to be golden as far as uh, surviving through the fights and causing a lot, a lot of damage when the Warcry has expended, been expended. But Jamf yeah, Jerix is still kind of creep cutting the waves with his caustic finale, his sandstorm. They still take down the tier 2 tower down bottom and kind of even the odds here. I mean, there's only one tower in advantage for the Death Prophet Jakiro team. That's kind of surprising. Yeah, it is. And let's see, we got 10 second BKB right now on the Brewmaster, so we can blink in, go raid boss for 10 seconds, and then primal split for another 19 seconds of that. He's going for the auras, the Vladimirs, and speaking of the Vladimirs, the hood comes out, Anti Mage pulls it on, he's ready to go. Vladimirs, Battle Fury. Um, ready to go farm, I guess. He's still got a quite a bit of work to do before he can really jump into the fights and get that much done. He's 3, 7, and 3, 137 CS, fourth in net worth among the core heroes, 9.3K, and Jakiro here at 7.1. And Man. Puck actually, I think a pretty tough time here, played by Kafka. Last net worth in the cores. Yeah, if you just look at KDA, it kind of tells that story. Like, the fact that the anti has died seven times really set him back, but of all the deaths on... Uh, basically unknown, you have five deaths on your Puck, who's another hero that should be surviving through a lot. Nice uh, blink away from the uh, jump in God Strength Blink Stormhammer, and uh, they did see that coming at the least. Stream Coil will only hit on Bollocks here, but the Brew is ready to rumble in just a second. Here's the Raid Boss Brew, that 10 second BKB going over onto Trixie. JRX going to try to find some kills, help out. He focuses down the Puck. My Control blinks in, they will miss. Look at that. Up to the tree line. They'll spot him out, but they're not going to be able to cancel that TP in time. Either way, he's out of the picture for at least a couple seconds, and that could lead to the falling of this tier 2 tower. And meanwhile, bottom lane, anti mage doing anti mage things, channeling the rat, bring it, trying, to down, uh, trying to bring down the last tier 2. Actually, four anchors have pushed down a lot of towers. They have the tower advantage, even. Yeah, by one, but they're well, the death prophet. Now, even doubt, as they do the hero. Yeah. So in this position, the fact that they're even equal on towers is a bad thing. We have Jerex going for a nice little stun play. He'll be perfectly fine here. But yeah, in, in this position, they still have the Aegis for about a minute and a half, and I'm, I'm sure they want to do something with it. Um, but obviously, they, their options are limited. So it looks like they're just going to farm it out. The Aegis will expire, but they'll be rocking a, a little bit of crit on this Fen next time around. So he's getting pretty big. Uh, he has a strength gain of 2.7, and that is amplified by 200% when uh, the t ultimate is active. So that's actually a really big deal as far as his damage output. Each uh, individual level can give him like about eight damage and that d definitely adds up very quickly. Yep, it really does. Explaining also why Heart really good on Sven just gives you so much Dude, damage. Dude, Armlet is, is the way to fucking go, man. Yeah, I Ar mean... Armlet is so good strength per gold. It definitely was the, the item back in the day when the armlet toggles were one you could script them and two oh, gosh. were utterly ridiculous it's been uh, taken down a notch from then actually kefka's in some trouble oh. up top but look at that the storm hammer on two the, the Beautiful. dream goil on two oh, and while the mana void is there Man, it's a nice something. double kill for sneaky catapulting no, him up to 2.4k net worth also we've yeah. seen the satanic generally that's i guess the agility sort of strength hp item but also great for the life steal yeah, a super late game item, definitely. Yeah, um, yeah. I guess the Puck could have self-used if he had actually seen that coming, but I don't think anybody really saw, thought the end image would live for another second longer. He goes to the very end of the Dream Coil of Tether, and uh, if he walked away, he pr would have been stunned and killed. But he, he stood at it, and he stood his ground, he got enough distance from the Sven, and got a spell cast off before that auto-attack. And uh, the Aegis pops, full HP and mana for Sven. He's going to be going and pushing on that top tier too, and that actually, yeah, evens it out once again as Death Prophet does a quick little split push play on the bottom lane. Yeah, nicely done, and 
uh, anti-mage. If you're gonna die, die with your bootstraps on. He goes down fighting, gets the kill, gets some gold, and actually, uh, too many too many things die in the meantime. Yeah, actually, yeah, anti-mage got the kill before he died, so he got the experience from it. Obviously, he did. He cast the freaking mana void. But, uh, alright, Valix, the Yules, working towards... He was like, I'm gonna go Shiva's. Actually, maybe I'm gonna go Heart. So he's sitting on a Reaver and a Plate Mail right now. That's Lots fine. of armor. Those are good. That's a ton of effective HP. Plate Mail is one of the best casual items. I would yeah, say Yasha is. and then Plate Mail are in that order. So he'll finish up either the Shiva's or the, the Heart beforehand. If, if you're gonna have two components of two items, Plate Mail Reaver is probably one of the best. The mm -hmm. HP and the armor together is uh, pretty nice. Awesome. But uh, the crit is already up on the Sven. Daedalus is here, and Whoa. At, although it's not like the old Magnus plus Sven, what is One it? One like hit. 2.7x. Old EG versus Navi. Yeah. What a game. What Was that a Star Ladder game? I don't even... It was Dreamhack, Dreamhack. Winter. And there it was go. awesome. Was that the same tournament as uh, never been done before in the history of Dota? The No Tide play, yeah. Nice. It was uh, about a day or two before that. Before Alliance was Alliance. Indeed. Old times. But uh, now we have a 2.4x coefficient on crit. Not as incredible, but still pretty damn good. And uh, I'm guessing he wants attack speed next. Probably go for Assault Karas. Oh, wait, no. They got an AC on the Brewmaster. Um, what do you go for, us, Fen, in this situation? Well, I guess a hard or a I think the strength item. Yeah, hard or satanic, for sure. I mean, you can't... Uh... <laughs> Jeez, man. I was going to say, you can't refresh the blanking bar anymore, but as I look at it, it still has a 10-second charge. That's not Ooh. good news for the anchors. They're going to look for mind control. Can they bring him down? The they silence is there. He'll BKB, though. And yeah, that's going to be commendous. the... He could have even used more of that charge, but I guess he wanted the CC. He'll uh, wind walk to the tornado. He'll throw the stun out onto the anti-mage. They'll bring down Trixie. This will be his eighth death. Oh, my gosh. Spending so much time in tornadoes. I think one was a self fuels, one was a cyclone. Maybe an aggressive Yules, the stun from Sneaky. JRX coming in. It's nothing. Maybe a pulse or uh, two, but that's not what you're looking for. Sneaky now using that 10 second charge. Anti Mage going to go down to Kafka as he blinks away from the coil. Unknown, looking for the death ward, but wasn't really needed. Witch Doctor's like, I'm needed! Except, not really. He has an Ags, too. Oh. Wow, he's got so much. And what a long range storm hammer. The meteor connecting with the Death Prophet. I really thought that was just going to be a, a BKB into defensive Bruce split and they walk away. And that's uh, as, it's not as good as a kill, but it's still something they're happy to walk away with. But he keeps in pursuit. He gets the tornado up in the air for as long as he needs to for them to follow it up. And even though the Jakiro could have been left for dead, they go and try to fight it. So they not only make the Bruce split useful, but then they lose their exorcism cooldown and their anti mage once again, delaying that Manta style. Really should have, think it should have been just one of those plays where you, you cut your losses, but I think they saw something in that epicenter that just obviously didn't come down to practice. The only person hit was the puck who didn't get stunned, and yeah, in those circumstances, doesn't really take too much. Oh, oh the nice four man burrow. Burrow. Oh, what burrow. silence! The ice path, the macro fire! Oh, what and a no good nobody dies. But still. They walk away, even after those incredible plays. It's just to keep their tier 3 denied. That's such a big mistake for Unknown to be clumped up that much, especially against the JRX Sand King. And, it, well, it doesn't even matter. They're just, at this point, they're not even that far ahead. But itemization or just the hero composition, lack of follow-up for the anchors, whatever that variable might, might be here. That's the bottom line. They have better cooldowns. And yeah. uh, Trixie going down. Yeah, they have short cool the shorter. Oh! Wow, big mana void. Oh, oh. Bring it down too. Sneaky though, still alive, still fighting, still swinging, still getting headshots, but they'll bring him down in the end. He'll respawn in 80. Does have buyback if he wants to use it. Kefka still up there. This is the buyback by Trixie as well. Trying to find a kill, trying to get his first. He won't do it. Witch Doctor gets back to the fountain, will live, keeping his perfect game alive. 6 0 and 9. That was something, though. I mean, still the racks survived. That was a thousand damage mana void coming out on the Witch Doctor. That was a very astute observation of his mana pool and just jumping in without even right clicking away. He gets a huge bomb off and showing the, the team fight presence that that hero actually has nowadays. Didn't really used to do anything with mana void before, didn't have uh, much team fight, but they buff it and they buff it, and suddenly we get some fireworks. But. Yeah, it's still going to be uh, kind of them clawing tooth and nail trying to get back into this game. The Anti-Mage is only now picking up the Manta style. 
usually you're like, oh, that's 3 a.m., let's go. But that's a 25-minute item, maybe. Like, that's a, a 25 minute is even a little behind schedule for the standard a.m. farmer nowadays. But 35, 36 minutes in, he just doesn't survive. He doesn't have the armor even with the Vlads. So they go forward, they play on Roshan, commit the exorcism, that works out fine. But uh, we'll see maybe a smoke play coming out from the side of the Radiant. Yeah, basically unknown, making their move. They won't be in time to stop the Roshan, but maybe to find a pick after the fact. And wait, Valix left the pit? They actually will get in time to do something, but uh, it's because they want to give him a Man the Aegis. Let's see if they find anything after the fact. Now they're going to decide not to go for it. The Exorcism, they don't quite know how much time was left. Not at all. I think that would have been a pretty okay time for them to go in. Maybe they weren't all quite around. Sneaky was a little further on the back lines, and uh, who was yellow? Magoma was maybe not quite there. But, oh well. They're still not that scared. They're like, well, we're going to go back towards the middle lane. We're going to be a little safer about this. We've got the primal split. We've got God Strength. 8 second BKB. Ags on the Witch Doctor. Uh, let's look at Puck's items right now. The Yule's looking for that Ags as well. Everyone's been running. anti has been blinking. This is important. I love that full second stun. Fun. And so Ice Bath Macro no. Fire takes out the Creep Wave. They might have to deal with backdoor protection. They're going to Primal Split and bring down the building so fast. BKB and God Strength was also thrown out. And yeah, <laughs> Brewmaster's like, I'll, I'll go ahead and get this. Oh, and there's no, a Coil. No, uh-oh, no. uh-oh, JRX is in some trouble. And actually, the Cask isn't going to bounce as he Ghost Scepters it off. Or maybe just no one was close enough. He Well, he Burst Strike away from people, and it just hit him only. Yeah. Kefka will not be silenced and uh, or yulezed up for that matter, but he is still going to be pursued. They have the Blink Dagger coming up, but not soon enough. He's going to be right back down. So one casualty, but for the Rax, Definitely that's worth fine. it. So uh, I actually thought there was some real potential there with Jax being smoked. Uh, the smoke epicenter is so damn good for catching people off guard. You won't be canceled for the most part, and uh, you can yeah, Blink and four Staff in, Burrow Strike in, and you will be able to get a lot of damage off, but... The Sven just blinked it so aggressively, he didn't expect it, and he was revealed very quickly. Oh no, the perfect game from Zeroji now out of reach. Death Prophet gets him, but everyone was there and involved in that. Hmm. So they still have the Aegis and the Manta up on the AM. They know that uh, the split is down for the moment at least, but if they get clump up too much, if they get caught in a stun, the God Strength will come through, and they're going to be crit down so quickly with that cleave. So they just force a buyback, and they should be falling back, but they're so desperate to change the state of the game now they lost that Rax that they're committing. Going to try to use this Exorcism cooldown in a big way in this team fight. One of the first maybe 5v5 team fights of the game. Yeah, it's been some big skirmishes oh. already, and they're going to jump in straight onto Valix. If they bring him down here, the sail fuels to get some more damage out. The BKB on Sven, though, not really anything to deal with that. Puck, now, uh, is that a respawn or is that a buyback? That's just a respawn coming in. Yeah, he was about 20 seconds when the fight started, so he just came back into it. So they lose two. It is just the supports, unless... Is it not? Yeah, it's gone. TP out. Valix gets back to base. The spirits return. They're not able to go high ground, though, and they lose a little bit more on the side of the anchors. Yep, so uh, they do what they can to try to change the state of affairs, but it's just not enough. They didn't have the high ground team fight and the exorcism goes to waste. They don't even take the tier 3. So, good defense from basically known. Kind of what you would expect, though. Just the, the Sven being as farmed as he is, able to jump right on his targets, and the anti-mage not able to do enough, even uh, though he could have committed the Aegis. It just, the supports pop on the back line, and, and down they go. Now we go in for the four-man play to the high ground of the bottom lane. And Sven looking for the abrupt pickoff, playing super aggressive. Yeah, and he yeah. still does have that six second JRX on the tree line. The man to focus on here. Gonna get one stun out. We'll blink back, putting that on a cooldown for a little while, but he still does have BKBs the capability down. to channel. He's waiting for these BKBs to coil out there. Epicenter Is that the Ags finished? I'm not sure. Epicenter's coming in though. Is it gonna be enough? Blink was maybe disabled or, or I don't know what, but it looks like an ally is going to force him in. He still has Blink now on the chase, and they're losing three on the side of Unknown. TP out from the Vengeful Spirit. Witch Doctor um, bought back, well, not actually a couple of minutes ago, but respawns now. We'll they ward up. Now. They hold it. This, this could be the turnaround. I mean, obviously, uh, we've seen basically Unknown in control of this game for the past 30 minutes almost, but if you look at the graphs, things have been spiraling very rapidly towards four anchors ever since AM actually got a chance to farm. He's now up to 259 CS from his almost abysmal start in the early game. He died like seven times in 25 minutes, but now he's Manta, Basher, Vlad's Battle Fury, and uh, 
Jarex's epicenter wasn't ideal, but it was something. The reason he didn't have blink was because he actually went for a stun on Panda and then blinked back. That forced a BKB, but he got a little early with the epicenter. He saw the positioning of his opponents. He's like, I can go for that. But if you go for that play, you have to shift Q your force staff, which he didn't do. You shift Q force, then you shift Q the burrow. And uh, that just wasn't the case. So now we see him jumping in to defend his anti-mage, who was uh, forcing some action on the high ground. Another BKB force, but uh, they'll just walk away with the epicenter if they can. Unfortunately, there was no BKB on the Death Prophet, so she gets tornadoed up. Now BKB comes through. The TP will not be canceled, and uh, they just keep on going on the run. Purple Split was used, which might slow down, you know, the strike back here from Unknown. Let's see if they'll find the anti-mage. What are they going to do? They'll drop the coil, perhaps. The silence went out. They're going to drop the coil if he blinks. That's going to be a four-second stun. Oh, no. Axe is actually not done yet. It's going to be maybe, what, two and a half second stun? I don't, I'm not sure what. Quit. Oh, three without yeah. Axe. So, not upgraded yet, unfortunately. The the puck. Did He, he had a buyback, right? No? Uh, he's one of the few oh, that did Yeah, didn't. he had just respawned at the tail end of the... Yeah, you know. Not, not that case. But uh, I thought maybe in a more recent skirmish. Just no, it was... A, Sven that buying blue. back, Brewmaster buying back, and Witch Doctor a while ago. So, a lot of gold committed, and that's why the net worth dra graph is dropping so heavily. Now, 4K in favor of four anchors. So, they need to, to progress to the next level. If they, if they haven't been able to really slam the door shut on this game. Every fight they lose is putting them far, further and further away. So, they're going to go for something sneaky, go for the smoke play, presumably. There we go. And uh, there are no Dire Observer Wards in an offensive sense. So, they have no idea if they're farming their jungle, their ancients, or they're about like a thousand units away from you about to blink. So they Forinkers should be playing cautiously, but at the same time you have to balance that between playing cautiously and actually getting your farm. Because the Matoma man would love to have an abyssal within the next five minutes, but he's gonna just stay on this high ground and it looks like nobody's gonna fall for the smoke. Yeah, not gonna catch a single person off guard with that. Everyone's still in the bottom lane, and who is uh, anti me? No, that's actually... I saw the, the moving so quick on the minimap. It's actually JRX blinking around everywhere. Burrow striking as well. Into the tree lines, looking for something, someone. Uh, if he's positioning down here, I, I would expect the rest of his team to be start pushing out this lane, but I don't really see it happening. I don't know. He's making some rogue plays. Just looking to uh, keep these waves pushed out. Make sure anti mage doesn't have to do all the work. With that caustic finale, it's uh, really easy for him to do. Yeah, but they're just going to push the top lane instead, I do believe. And uh, right now, we're in an interesting position in the game where the tides have turned just a little bit, but it's kind of still either team's game. Right now, there are full buybacks up for four anchors, though, so they can take any fight inside their base, and I believe basically Unknown are aware of this fact. So they're going to play it just in their own territory, spreading the map, farming out, and avoiding getting picked off. That's an important thing, because the Skywrath is sinking, even with... Uh, Two BKBs on your team. The Scar Sanking is still very scary, and you do have to respect a little bit what they're capable of. Yule, uh, the Yules on the Puck also is one of those cards that you can play to try to get out of a, a bad spot. But in either case, four anchors are the confident ones. They're the ones mobilizing, and uh, it's actually Death Prophet going for a Refresh Orb this early. Like, uh, I've seen Refresh Orb for sure, but Volok thinks that he can't really do much more beyond BOT's Refresher in this current state. Uh, I guess that's a fair assessment because the double exorcism is so huge, and uh, obviously. Where are the you... yet, though? Hmm? Oh, just kidding. Whew, tired yeah, eyes. He doesn't. He doesn't have, have a hex, but he does have a sheepless. Yeah, yeah. Then I think the refresher is definitely the next call. Like one exorcism, like they they feel back in this game, so one exorcism to win the fight, and then two exorcisms to to kill the base. So. Yeah. I think a big aspect of it is if she does get focused down in the fight at all, she can buy back with a second exorcism because you don't want to take that with you to the grave. So uh, I think that's pretty important is farming up the refresher and buy back. And that's going to put them in a, I'm not saying they can't lose, but they're in a much better way. All right. Game is definitely slowing down a little bit. It was, it was looking for a while there, starting about the 20 minutes and going to the 30 minutes that we thought unknown was maybe just going to completely run away with this game, but the anchor's really starting to put up a fight. anti has stopped dying. He's been at that 10 deaths for actually quite a while right now. He's about to have an Abyssal Blade, and we've seen how strong that is definitely over the games for these days. This week of Star Ladder, the Abyssal, the Blinks Abyssals. anti has a Blink built in, so he doesn't even have to buy one like Lycan did. And Broodmother. Uh, but there it is if he wants it. Given the circumstances of this game, probably going to farm another probably 2,000 gold before even buying it. Wants to have that buyback. 
Yep, so sneaky stuff from Jerax, and uh, it's going to be mind control to spread the map up top. Uh, wondering if he has much progression to go for right now. Like, he's got his BKB uh, just to get out of silences. He's got the Vlad's AC. Some people look towards Aghanims on the hero, but I would say that that's not really a, like a 45 I'd say Shivas item. Shivas if they don't have so, one. Shivas is not too bad. The aura, aura, of course, will still permeate yeah, it does. when you're in the split, and uh, it just makes you overall harder to kill. Um, I mean, you think about your fact that you already have 32, 31 armor, so adding in the Shivas on top, that exorcism isn't going to do too much to you. In another case, we're going to see Matoma Man pick up an Aegis. He does now have the option to buy out for his Abyssal Blade, and I think he will. Yeah. Before, it would have been a very foolhardy to go for that because obviously you don't have buyback, but now that he has the Aegis, he feels a little bit more confident that he's not just going to go down outright, and he will be able to use that Abyssal Blade to help initiate the fight. We're doubling down on sorcery right now. I don't know why anti mage is saying that, but... Because fuck magic, that's why. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And fun, for that matter. Um, Matumba Min farming up the enemy jungle, making sure they don't get anything. And unknown now, they're the ones that are feeling pressure, don't quite know what to Ooh, do. They'll smoke bollocks. up again, looking for the next big play. Will they catch off Bollocks? You're the Death Prophet in the middle lane. So and hard to like stand this will. out. Oh, nope. the BKB is there, but they've got some good physical damage, too. I mean, look at that crit! And the bat Ouch. is there a basher finished up on Sven? There is, and he'll bring him yeah. down. That was God Strength activated. And a buyback is available for Death Prophet, but that's a big kill. If he buys back, that really will delay the progress on his refresher. Now creeps in the base, so that backdoor protection is gonna be losing the game right disabled. now has to be the prime concern. He really needs to buy back right now, yeah. Tier 3 tower will fall. They're working for a second lane of Rax, and even with this lane of Rax, it's not game over. Anti-Mage can definitely keep his team in it. There's the buyback and Buyback comes out, walk away. Oh. Abyssal Blade, he thinks he can get away with the with the BKB TP. And split. hold on, now he's got a primal split. Keep going for this. Gonna put the anti mage up in the air. You can start playing the ignore run, the anti mage Earth strategy. And gotta get Earth Panda out of there, man. Oh, uh, he's so slow. He's like just jogging. He's, he's like moving He's walking. like, ah, I should really jog more. I should I should go for a run every morning. It would help. But nice for a strike timing. Doesn't even get the chance to blink out. And that's a nice. Clear pick on the panda, but at the cost of your Death Prophet's buyback. Gotta stop uh, drinking that, that Thunder Keg brew. <laughs> top are under Go for the low-cal diet. Yeah, the thund Thunder Keg brew with light for uh, for the brewmaster from now on. And those of you not from the States, light beer is different here. <laughs> I don't know why I feel the need to make that addition, but there you go. Farming under the... Observer Ward at the Ancient Camp. Mugama will go down. The Jakiro will, will be taking the Vengeance Aura for 55 seconds. And uh, there's really no major objectives to take other than right down the mid lane. So they're going to group up together and try to force at least one buyback, if not two. Also, even it up at the racks would be pretty nice. That would be good. And we'll, certainly. The, we'll go to the buyback window. For the Radiant, every single person has buyback right now. So even a fight here isn't going to be oh, winning. Oh, it's back, well, it's back now. The, now Brewmaster they doesn't. forced what they wanted. They trade the Death Prophet buyback for the Brewmaster buyback, and that should be fine for them. They still are waiting out Aegis time, though, that they have to find a better opportunity to utilize. They have two minutes left on the thing, so they want another pick and push. Also, Antimage may be having buyback by the time that Aegis runs out. It looks like he will. With He needs 1,700 gold. He's got... Mostly unreliable, but even upon death, it still should be enough for the buyback. So he's probably feeling pretty good. We'll try to use the Aegis here. It costs 50 when you die, so it hurts. Okay, mm maybe not quite enough. He's 150 gold off of it right now. He'll farm it up very quickly. There's a refresher of though. Very aggressive choice, considering he won't be able to buy. Yeah. Uh, well, it's on cooldown, right? Yeah. No, I mean the gold factor doesn't matter. I'm just saying like. This, he, he essentially is saying, I'm going to live through an entire first exorcism, and that's ambitious, but we'll Jumping see. in, trying to use the first life, Matumbaman throws down the Abyssal Blade, didn't result in the kill, and the Death Ward doing oh, a lot, and still bouncing portal. throughout the fight. It's going to go over to Valix right now, and the support Witch Doctor is about to kill both cores in this game, and now the Yule Sub drop on Matumbaman. Valix trying to run away, and we just talked about how he doesn't have a buyback. He forces out the tower hit coming through. It's not going to be quite enough. There is 25 armor there. Sven still wants to chase, but can't blink because of the exorcism. Trixie wow. will be brought down. Two heroes, three heroes down for the anchors, and they're still going after this Death Prophet, trying to chase. She is very, very far away. 
Yeah, yeah I that's think they're fine. mistake. She got stunned by the Dream Coil for four seconds through BKB, and the Sven was right on top of her. And then they swapped her back into the base. It did make her get hit by the Death Ward, but the Sven does more damage per second than the Death Ward right now, and they could have waited until the at least the Dream Coil stun ended and she was running again. But still, I mean, they got the huge fight for themselves, the major Dream Coil with that Agonim Scepter. Kefka really earning his money now. Like, it's been a... It's been a while coming, I'll, I'll be honest. Like, his KDA isn't as strong as most pucks, but he definitely really earned the pick in this one here. He's going to be able to blink out of his self fuels, and uh, they're still kind of up. Yeah, the racks. Skyrath down for another 20. The anchor's still not quite full strength, but Matumbaman is here. They've got Sneaky. He's going to oh. BKB up. He gets Abyssal, but they're still not going to be able to bring There's him down. Center. The melee racks to fall. Epicenter oh. about to come in, and there it is from JRX. Is it going to do enough, though? Not a lot. Of damage, it gets the Sven pretty low. Will they be able to clean him up? They will. The mana void, but there's a buyback on Sven. Buyback on Witch Doctor. Sand King's gonna die. Be down for a 70. I would not be surprised if unknown. Maybe try to throw out these buybacks and then maybe go up that bottom lane and try to get those megas. Actually, the range racks still remain standing, but unknown. I think they get what they they've come for and won't lose the game off those deaths because they do have buyback on everybody. Yeah, but uh, I mean, right now for ASC, get a, a moment of. Reprieve. They are going to be pressured as far as the lanes go because they only have one range racks up top and nothing in mid. But are they going to go? Are they just forcing buybacks again? They want Sven to buy back this time. Witch Doctor yeah. and Vengeful Spirit, they don't really care about Sven. They need to get the buyback off of. But um, yeah, in, in this position, the second exorcism was huge. And uh, there's a Sven buyback. Goodbye. But Kefka might keep him around. No Dream Coils in their mind. Um, but yeah, so. And the Venge buyback was completely unnecessary there because they're already on the run. But I guess if they could get a fight, then maybe he gets involved. But Mind Control's the only one on the front line. So anyways, um, back to what I was saying. Yeah, the exorcism, second exorcism really worked out there. Volix, if he just dies outright because they don't mismanage the nether swap, then the, the Rehusher Orb feels really sour because you're going to be down for the count anyway. So you're not really getting that cooldown back. But... Now he's got the refresher. I was able to use that second exorcism, and obviously it it made its impact in that top lane fight. They were able to repel them, but only for now. I would have to say that I would say basically our are in a better position in this game right now. Yeah, I think so. The the racks and a half, or the lane and a half, the lane <laughs> racks advantage. Mm -hmm. uh, three of the if it was just heroes, down. then I would say that 4AC have a tiny tiny edge, but yeah. with the racks on top, it's uh, basically unknowns game at the moment yeah just looking at the graphs for fun here some of the people were saying it looks like the beyond the summit logo pretty much does at this point there's a steep decline there uh look at working on the second peak now as the anchors slipped up a little bit they were up to a 13 or a, sorry 11 10 000 lead it's fallen back down to four and now they're starting to regain after they force out those buybacks that was definitely something very helpful for them uh, and putting those on cooldown. Only Puck and Witch Doctor with a buyback now. If there's a full team wipe or something, that's probably not going to be enough uh, to stop the anchors from just taking out the base and probably killing the Ancient. Alright, okay, so item pickups that we haven't really mentioned much. The double Ethereal Blade coming up from 4ASC. They got one sinking, one on Skyrath, and it is good for damage amplification uh, when they're going for plays with their uh, Mystic Flares, with their Epicenters and such, but a really big aspect of the item is just to use it defensively on somebody that's getting hit by the Death Ward, by the, or by the Sven, or both. If they're getting hit by both the Sven and the Death Ward, and then suddenly they're immune to all physical damage, that's a long time the Death Prophet's back in the game, or the Anti-Mage gets to survive. That is a, a very big deal, because obviously every second of Exorcism counts, the self fuels plus the defensive E-Blade times two, and suddenly you get somebody for immune to any physical damage for ten and a half seconds. That's going to be pretty nice when you're going up against quite a bit of physical damage. We've got my Control still trying to farm up. Has not decided on what the next item is going to be. I think we suggested the Shivas for that Brewmaster. He's at 4,700 gold. Zeroji had an almost perfect game. He's 8, 3, and 12 now, so still very, very good. And let's see, they're trying Kefka. to get away from this, but they're going in. Oh. Oh, wow. There's the buyback on the puck. He tries to initiate it. Gets shut down almost immediately. Boogie, though, will fall. He goes scepters up, but the paralyzing cask will bounce into him after the storm hammer connects. No buyback for a minute. So four v five, puck buying back, signaling somewhat of an all-in play here, as they try to bring down the bottom lane. Skyrath well, isn't the biggest kill, and there is another exorcism already refreshed up onto the death prophet. So 
I guess I should have said this a while ago, but for those that don't know, you can't double up on Exorcism. You wait for one to be finished, and then you start up the next one. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, Anyways, that's going to be at this point in time. She has that option available, but uh, there is no split. There is no God Strength, but there's still a swap initiation. And Bollock's in a bad spot. Trying to find those crits, either from the Brute or from the Sven. God, now Anti Mage is coming in. There's the BKB. They will stun up Bollock's. Sneaky, he needs it. He's throwing it. He's got his own Abyssal. He just completed it up. Anti Mage on the back end of the fight will try to bring down Zoroji. Nice two man burrow from JRX. That's. The limitations of the five second BKB on Can't Sneaky. Live for that. That's insane. They force him, they E Blade him, he uses the puck. Anything could have killed them, but no. I think an anti mage here. This will be really big. The Ice Path trying to create some space. The silence is there. Is there a stun? No, there's not. No swap either. Anti mage able to blink out. That's a second exorcism. Big commitment from Volix. is pretty he low, really though. Wants to clean somebody up. Sven, does he have any mana? Could turn around for this potentially. Oh. Yeah, he's going to. He's going to blink in. He runs out of mana, though, afterwards. He needs a tread swap back to Intelligence. Now he's got it. Nice tread swap, but the Yule's dodge is there. Exorcism going to be running out somewhat soon. Valix probably going to go back up to full HP at this rate. And on the other side of the fight, Mind Control trying to deal with anti -Mage. He'll be mana voided to swap out on the Illusion, actually. I don't know if that's to escape, to help, or what. Magoma, though, will fall. Buyback on Brew. Buyback on Witch Doctor. Nothing on the Vengeful Spirit. Sven will take the Walk of Shame back home. As Blue Sven, Red Sven couldn't get the job done. 39-31 is the kill score. Yeah, but I mean, the way that they're kiting this Sven is so insanely good from four anchors. They're really just outplaying basically unknown right now. The, the four staff play, the ethereal blade plays. I think they put uh, like three E-blades on Death Prophet throughout that extended fight. And it saved her life almost every time. Like she was taking a lot of damage there from the Sven, even with the amount of armor she got from Shiva's. But... She was able to stay in that fight for so damn long because of the kiting. She Yules is stunned, she BKB is stunned, they force staff her places, they just make sure that she's just barely out of reach. She lived with like 100 HP at the end, uh, or in the middle of that last fight, then regens with heart and comes back into it. Like really, really good movement from four anchors in that fight, but the conclusion of it is that we do see that the buyback on the Brewmaster and the Witch Doctor were expended in order to secure Roshan. Anti-Mage, however, will have his own buyback if he didn't just buy a Butterfly. I'm not so sure about that. Butterfly is insanely good here, but if he dies, he's going to be the saddest carry in the world. All right, Skyrath Mage up on the high cliff, trying to check if it's boarded as he does have the gem. He'll TP back. That's the gem that uh, Magoma had purchased up, actually, as now... Again, in strength, unknown in the bottom lane, trying to push in, trying to end this game. They'll wait, they'll wait for the Venge here. But um, yeah. what, one thing to note as far as uh, evasion goes is that although a lot of stuff is going to be evaded here, the bounces from the Witch Doctor uh, Death Ward, obviously it bounces to anybody in range with the Aghanims, that's going to that cannot be dodged. The bounces of the Death Ward cannot. The initial one can be. Uh, same with Sven's right clicks. Sven's right clicks initially can be dodged, but the cleave effect from them cannot. So have to be very careful about how you're positioning yourself even with this butterfly and again this is a, a very dangerous pickup because it could give them the damage he needs to kill off somebody and change the fight but if he dies early he's down for the count all right well they did wait for the venge she's here now puck with the gem again purchased by makoma we've got a gem on each side of the field actually two one on kefka one on magoma well, they gave the Brewmaster to Aegis instead of the Sven. Yeah, if he's going to they... jump in first. He's been the one getting the fight off started okay. off, so if he can go in and die, the and then just sort of win the fight thereafter. Looking at the buybacks right now, there's not oh, a whole lot. We're going to go in the swap stop, back stop. out, and now the self yules over onto Valix. Ghost Scepter's once again going to keep her alive. Still has the self yules available. Sneaky, able to bring down JRX. And actually, Puck is, is the first to go down the mana void. Oh, man. Puck down for 100 seconds, for no buyback. And let's see, there's the Primal Spill, trying to oh, deal with things, trying to do whisper. anything. And now the triple kill here for Matumba Min. Antimage fully online, Sven will go down, and they've lost four here. Buyback on Sven, but that's not going to be enough. This could be the end, and there's the Refresher. Not going to use that next Exorcism. We'll still have the current one available, and still we're on, uh, still exercising right now as, well, the second life coming out. It's about to be a full five-man wipe if they can kill Mind Control one more time. It doesn't look like it's going to be that big of an order and they'll bring him down with relative ease they're all dead it's 40 to 36 and it looks like the four anchors while the landing stage was absolutely miserable for them they've stuck in they've persevered and now it looks like they're going for the victory down middle lane sven will buy back
Yeah, just uh, the, not the fight they were looking to take. They go for a cool little swap uh, with the Aghanim's Puck play. It does guarantee a four-second stun on the Death Prophet, but the E-Blade Saber, and without that kill, the fight just turns uh, sour very, very quickly. The Intimage bringing down the Puck with the Mana Void, and I mean, that breaks everything up. I mean, even the Cheese wasn't used very effectively from the Sven. He only got mana out of it. I'm trying to find the combat log for how much he healed, but it couldn't have been but a few hundred Well, sure, it's your fours. They've got 20 seconds to work with. They're not even going to worry about the Broodmother Effigy. Not going to kill it with fire. They do have some liquid fire, but... Tier 4 is the, obviously the important objective right now, and they're going to bring them all down with this secondary exorcism, and this very well is probably going to be the game for Anchors on quite the comeback play today. Just looking at those graphs. Not as topsy-turvy as some of the ones from yesterday, but still a sight to behold as that's the game. Matumbaman, 17 and 11, turns it out to a decent KDA, and what a game. Yeah, that was a hell of a game. I mean, obviously we see that the basically a gnome puts up a huge fight here. But, uh, yeah, some mistakes here and there. The initiation, the swap timing, it just wasn't what they wanted it to be. So I, I will say that they just didn't have the fights uh, positionally uh, under control. And they also could have considered something like a Diffusal Blade because of the fact that they were under, obviously, the strap from 4ASC was to keep the Death Prophet alive with E-Blades, and it worked out damn well. So maybe a Diffusal on a support or something like that could have been a game breaker too. But end of the day, they put up a, a great fight, and uh, they definitely... Uh, earned their way into it the hour-long game, but 4ASC are the ones that close it out, uh, despite the very rough start from the Anti-Mage. Indeed. All right, well, if you've got a fever and the only cure is more Dendi mid lane action, well, stick around. You're about to lose that fever as it's Na'Vi versus Basically Unknown coming up next here in Star Ladder 11 Europe. Stay tuned. I'm Helium. You can follow me on Twitter at Helium Brother Blaze here at Blaze Casting. Last game of the day coming up soon.